Welcome everyone to the YouTube channel of Intifos Industries. Today we will be introducing you a new product. Uh, it is the Honor Floats Ultimate model. As we can see this is a control unit of Honor Float Ultimate model. We can see a mode selection switch over here which has a manual of an auto mode. We can select it using this switch. Also we have a pump on indication here which will indicate the motor is on. This is the dry run indication which is a main use of the ultimate model which has a dry run sensor which means that when the motor is running dry it will indicate and it will turn off the motor and protect it from running dry. This model is very useful in the cases of bore wells where you cannot sense the underground water level and also in enclosed underground tanks. So if the water supply is exhausted or if there is any leak in the foot valve or if there is any problem with the water pump, the water will not be reaching the inlet in the tank and which can be sensed using the inlet sensor that is a dry run sensor and it will turn off the water pump. So we can protect your water pump when it is running dry. So in case when the dry run indication is lightened up and the motor is disconnected by the owner float ultimate, we have to put it in off mode and check the water pump. Check whether the water supply is exhausted in the bore well or in the sump tank or is there any other problem caused by the water pump. Like if there is any leak in the foot valve or is it if there is any other problem with the water pump. You have to check what is the problem that caused dry run and we have to uh, find a solution and solve the solve that problem and once this problem is solved or if the water is replenished in the sump or the bore well you have to put back the uh, mode selection switch into auto mode and the pumping will resume now we'll install the float unit on our water tank first we have to make a one centimeter hole on the tank this is a float switch of on float water level controller as we can see we can see a uh, extending wire coming out of it we can open this protective cover and take out this that wire and we can see an extension a white extension coming out from the uh, body it has to go in that hole that we made just now now i am inserting the wire inside that hole into the tank and as you can see that extension goes in the tank now I have to make two holes on both sides to fix the float unit. Now using a screwdriver and the provided screws, I'm fixing it in place. You can also see the content and the cable that is coming from the control unit. Let's take out the wire that we already inserted in the tank. We have to pass through the stopper nut. Uh, through the string we have to unscrew this small bolt here and we can pass the string through it the stopper nut has to be fixed at the maximum level one or two inch below the overflow limit and make sure not to over tight the stopper nut to avoid breakage of the wire and now we have to pass the float bolt and the bush that we seen earlier and we have to pass the string through the small hole there like this and in the end we have the dead weight. The bottom side of the dead weight marks the minimum level at which the pump starts pumping. So we have to cut the extra wire to the minimum limit that you require and tie the dead weight. Now we can release all these components into the water tank. As you can see here, the dead weight at the minimum level and the stopper at the maximum level. And the float moves in between them. Now let's look at the electrical connections. As we can see, uh, two wires are coming out of the float unit. And we are taking a cable uh, from the uh, tank here to the control unit downstairs. And now we have to join these two wires with the two wires on our cable. Like so. I have to insulate the joint. I am using a normal insulation tape for that purpose. As you can see I have insulated the joint. 
Now I have to use a waterproof insulation tape in order to make this joint waterproof. These are always used in submersible pumps to make the joints waterproof. I can cut a required length and I have to put it around the joint in order to make it waterproof. And while I am doing it, I am using a little bit of force there. I am pulling it a little bit in order to make the joint perfect. Two thirty volt AC goes to the float switch, so that you have to make sure the joint is very safe. In that case, you have to use such insulation. I have made both the joints insulated using waterproof insulation tapes, and I have to keep it in place and close the box like this. It's a press fit box. You can close it like that. We have completed the installation of our float unit. We can see that all the electrical connections and electrical contacts are outside the water tank and nothing is in contact with the water. So as we can see here, this is the dry run sensor of the Ono Float Ultimate model. We can see how it's fixed on the water tank. As you can see here, this, is, this inlet is vertical so that we are using a bend and making it horizontal and connecting the dry run sensor at the end like this and making it horizontally okay and the point where the wire is coming out it has to be pointing downwards exactly as shown here you have to fix it and if the water is coming in horizontally in your tank you have you just have to connect it directly at the end uh, but in this case it's coming vertically so that we are using a bend to make it horizontal as you can see here, this is how the water is filling up in the tank. Uh, in this design, we can see that it's not causing any hindrance to the water that is being pumped in the tank. Uh, water is flowing in freely. Now let's make the connections in the control unit. On the back side, as you see here, we can see a cover which has to be opened to make the connections, also the guarantee card. We can use a screwdriver to open this cover. Uh, we have to bring in the wires from the dry run sensor and also the vertical sensor to the control unit. The vertical float must use a 2 core cable, uh, 0.5 square mm which, uh, because it transfers 230 volt AC. For the dry run sensor, it uses a 12 volt DC supply so you can use an electronic cable. As we open this, we can see three wires and two sets of connectors inside. And one connector, as we can see, it is labeled as DR, which is the dry run sensors connector. And the other one is a VF, that is the vertical float connector. The wires, the two wires coming from the vertical float has to be connected in the VF and the other two wires, which has to be connected in DR, which is coming from the dry run sensor. Then there are these three wires, which this red wire is the input phase and this yellow is the output phase and the black one is the neutral. This has to be connected accordingly. You can put in the wires through those holes inside and make the joints and close it afterwards with this cover. Watch the previous videos for more information. Then there are these mounting holes with the keyhole shape. With the provided screws and grips, we can use these holes to mount the control unit on the wall. So that was the installation of the Honor Floats Ultimate model with the dry run protection. Uh, if you liked the video, please share and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.